For many years now, a major focus of my work has been on workplace issues, and in particular, workplace well-being. So dealing with issues to do with stress, bullying and harassment, conflict in the workplace and related matters. Being concerned, for example, about how um, overloaded practitioners and managers can easily become in today's busy, pressurised workplace. So a lot of my interest has been around trying to make workplaces more humane places for people to work. And that led me into an interest in leadership because I've come to the conclusion that a lot of the problems that are encountered in the workplace come from wider political and sociological pressures. But how those wider political and sociological pressures are handled, how they're managed within the workplace, owes a lot to the quality of leadership. So to try and make sure that workplace well-being is promoted, that people are not allowed to be harmed by the pressures in the workplace, that's where leaders come in, that's where good quality leadership is really important. Now in the leadership world these days, there is a major interest in the idea of authentic leadership. It's become a real focus of attention, uh, many books being published on the subject, for example. Well, what's concerned me is that focus on authentic leadership is fundamentally flawed. Not that there's anything wrong with the idea of authentic leadership in itself. If I thought there was, I wouldn't write a book on that subject myself. But the way authenticity tends to be portrayed in those books is, in my view, oversimplified. Because the, the basic idea underpinning the conventional view of authentic leadership is that it's about getting in touch with your real self, your true self, so you're in touch with the reality of who you are. Now, for me, that is a distortion. That's a gross oversimplification of issues to do with personal identity and human experience, because at the end of the day, there isn't a real or a true self underneath. Um, human beings are constantly becoming. That is, we're, our personalities, our identities are fluid. And they're not just existing in a vacuum, they're part of wider social relationships. And those social relationships are constantly changing and evolving. So the idea that underneath all this change and development, there is some sort of core self is something of a myth, it's a fiction. And yet, despite that, there has been so much effort um, in placed in terms of developing ideas around authentic leadership in this sense of being true to yourself, finding the real you. Now, where I'm coming from is to see authenticity in its existentialist sense, that is, in terms of how it's used within existentialist philosophy. Authenticity is the opposite of bad faith. Bad faith is when we don't take ownership for our actions, when we try to put the responsibility for things outside ourselves when we say things like, I can't help it, that's just the way I am, um, or I, it's not my nature. Um, we try and find reasons for why we shouldn't take responsibility for our actions. Now, for me, I think to have effective workplaces, everybody needs to be clear about what they're responsible for. This isn't a blame culture I'm talking about. There's a world of difference between responsibility and blame. Um, responsibility is about taking ownership, about recognising what we can change, recognising how if we pull together and support one another, we can develop more positive working environments. For example, a key part of leadership is influencing or shaping the culture in which people work. And if we see ourselves as just fixed entities, you know, that we are these real true selves, then we just have to accept the circumstances we work in. But if we recognise, as existentialism does, that there is constant change, constant evolution, and we're part of that, then individually and collectively we can look at how we can change cultures, how we can shape them in a particular direction. Because at the end of the day, cultures don't have a mind of their own, they can't fight back. They are just sets of habits, taken for granted assumptions, unwritten rules. 
and so they are, they can be in certain circumstances at least relatively easy to change if people come together and support one another and for me that's what authentic leadership is about is where the leader is authentic is true not in terms of some fictional real self but in recognizing the complexities of how people interacting together create and shape their reality create and shape the cultural environment in which they work and if that cultural environment is not helpful it's characterized by negativity or low morale for example or a high level of anxiety then a, an authentic leader can help people to pull together to do something about that so that's it in a nutshell that's the idea of authentic leadership very different from the conventional idea of authentic leadership which as i say is fundamentally flawed but the idea that leaders can help people to take responsibility for their circumstances not to blame them that's a different kettle of fish altogether but to recognize that we have the power to change certain things if we choose to and that's the empowering vision of authentic leadership hope this has been useful thank you